welcome back. Great, we've covered two videos to give you a high level overview of IAS 37. The first one we did our SOAP standard on a page and the second one was a basic class example to get to grips with identifying liabilities that are provisions. Now I'm going to work through a decision tree just to help you okay, get a logical thought process in order to identify whether something's a provision, a contingent liability or whether you should not even recognize or disclose. Okay, Just a quick reminder from the first video, we had provisions in IAS 37 that had recognition criteria that said there must be a present obligation, excuse the spelling, present obligation, okay, and that the future outflow must be probable, and that you can make a reliable estimate of the amount that will be paid out. Okay, And then we talk about contingent liabilities and we said there were two types. The first one where there was no present obligation Okay, and you can see that links directly to not meeting the first definition or recognition criteria from I-37 for provisions. Or, we said there is a present obligation, but the present obligation okay, had future outflows that were not probable. Or, there was no reliable estimate that could be made. Okay, now that's obviously linked to not meeting the second and third recognition criteria. So basically, if we don't meet the recognition criteria of a provision, we've got to start thinking contingent liabilities. How do I go through that thought process? Let's do a decision tree. So the very first question is obviously going to be about whether there is a present obligation or not. Okay, So let's go down the positive route for that for a second. If there is a present obligation and you answer yes to that question, okay, we say yes, there is a present obligation, we land up asking ourselves the second question. Can or is the future outflow probable? And here I mean greater than 51%. Okay. If it is, I then go down and ask myself the final question, which can a reliable estimate of those future outflows be made? If I say yes, which is majority of the scenarios, it'll be yes. Then I will provide and in the statement of financial position, I will recognize a fully fledged liability called a provision. Okay. Let's work our way up that tree. So if in our scenario we started again, present obligation, I said yes, there is a present obligation and there's a past obligating event. I then go down to probable outflow. If the likelihood of the outflow is less than 50%, i.e. no, it is not probable, then I've got to ask myself a silly little question and saying, are the future outflows remote? And by remote, I mean like less than 5% likely. Generally, I will say no, okay? I wouldn't even be thinking about this if there wasn't some decent chance of a future outflow, but it's less than 50%. Then I will go down and I will disclose a contingent liability. So this will be in the notes only. Nothing in the statement of financial position. Okay. Obviously, if I said yes, the chances of any future outflows are remote, well, then I do absolutely nothing. No recognition, no disclosure. Nothing in the balance sheet or statement of financial position. Nothing in the notes to the statement of financial position. Okay, back one more time. Let's go back and pretend, yes, we do have a present obligation. Yes, it's greater than 51% chance of a probable outflow. But if I get down to the reliable estimate question, in the very rare circumstance where I say, no, I cannot make a reliable estimate, then obviously I will go down and I will disclose a contingent liability only. Okay, so ignoring all of that now, let's talk about the scenario 
where I start with my present obligation and I say no there is no present obligation there's no past event okay so there is no past event it may be a future event or a possible obligation right well then I ask myself is there actually even a possible obligation okay obviously if I say no then I will do nothing I don't disclose anything in the notes but if I say yes there is a possible obligation then I will filter through and I will disclose a contingent liability okay so guys please this decision tree keep it in the back of your head as we go into the future examples we're going to deal with and in all the situations this is a great thing to come back to it's also in um, either this illustrative guidance or the appendix to IS 37 this exact decision tree thank you